You're all welcoming. You're all welcome in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Mama Amen. Betty Amen. on the line. Uh, Jane, can you open the prayer, the, the, the platform with the word of prayer for us? Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, for your timing. I thank you, God, for this amazing day which you have made. We will rejoice and we are rejoicing. It's not in the future, but we are rejoicing and we are glad in it. Father, thank you. Thank you for everyone that is still connecting, that is trying to connect. I thank you for everyone that is already on this amazing platform, which is an altar holy unto you, oh God. We dedicate what is going to happen today before your throne of mercy and grace, which we come boldly, oh God. Oh God, I ask for spirit of wisdom. I ask for more understanding. I ask for open hearts, oh God. I ask that there will be much fruit, oh God, that will remain after everything that will be discussed today and what has been discussed previously. Oh God, I ask that everyone that is supposed to come on today, let there be no hindrances in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for our Apostle Pauline, the vision, oh God, and Pastor Betty, oh God, in the name of Jesus, and Bishop Odongo, Thank you for every leader on this platform, Lord God. We ask for more strength. We ask for more grace. We ask for more of your anointing, more of your favor, more of your provisions, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you say in the word of God, it is written by um, David, who was a prophet, also a king of God, that he said he's been young, he's old, he's never seen the righteous forsaken. We will never be forsaken. And I thank you that you are always with us. You never leave us. Thank you for your hand that holds us to even walk on water in those places that have not been navigated on. Thank you for the risk-taking anointing that you're releasing upon all of us to know that you are with us no matter what. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you very Amen. much for that prayer. I see some new faces. If you are here for the first time, just tell us your name, where you are, who you are, so we can get to know you even better. I see Buembo, Stephen. Yes, it's my second time joining you. I'm in Uganda. I'm glad to be part of this uh, movement, movement. Yeah, Pastor. Well, church, and I'm one of the upper churches in the western part of Uganda. Wow. I'm glad. Good. Good to have you, Pastor. Did you say this is your first time? It's my second time. Okay, okay, that's good. Yes. You're welcome. So, is there any other new person on the line? Oh, sorry, I have some technical issues here. It'll be okay. Yeah, I said if, if you are here on the for your first time, want to know your name, just introduce yourself briefly so we get to know you better. We don't have many first timers today. That's good. Okay, it's testimony time. I see Rabbi Smith. Welcome, Rabbi. I hear the network in Bamenda is crazy. By God's grace, you are here. We give God the praise. Uh, it's open for testimony. I don't know who did what with what you heard last week. I want to know where you are with what you heard before we continue for today. Mm -hmm. So the floor is open for testimony.
I'm going to be the first to testify since right. um, the people, maybe I'll trigger them to, um, to follow suit. I am, I've known about two Ugandan broadcasts that are in the diaspora. I think one of them is in the Middle East. Another one is from London. And um, they are very concerned about the situation in Uganda and that's what their broadcasts are always about. Given the information we've been sharing on this platform, I have connection with the one in London. And I texted him, I say, you know, I listen to your programs and I see you are kind of approaching it from a, a fleshly, you know, worldly point of view. And he's a Christian. So I said, have you ever considered the spiritual aspect of why Uganda is the way it is? And so I went ahead and I, I actually, I should have sent you this message, Apostle Pauline, that I sent him because I sent it to some other pastors in Uganda as well. So I said, you know, when you look at the spiritual aspect of why Uganda is the way it is, you can never approach it from a physical point of view. And I told them, you know, some of the things that are going on that spiritually that I think we need to tackle in a spiritual sense. And I kind of mentioned what we discussed the past two weeks about seeing our foundations on the culture, on the traditions, on the... Um, the different tribes and the Ganda, just like the man of God, Rabbi Smith had pointed out, you got the Ancholi, the Nkole, all the, you know, that stuff, that foundation is really very ungodly and demonic. And so I was trying to open their eyes to see this so that they can approach God from a different point of view, instead of thinking that changing leadership is going to change the situation in Uganda, because they cover all aspects of what's wrong with Uganda right now. And so I kind of opened their eyes to see it from a spiritual point of view. And I'm still praying that God will open their eyes to start tackling it on a spiritual, you know, since they are journalists, let them consider the spirituality of what's going on in Uganda in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You are so fired up with what you've heard and you are taking it to your own community, to the people that you're acquainted to, which is a good thing. It's going to spread slowly but surely because the truth has to spring out so that people can be truly liberated from the foundation. That's a good one. So who has a testimony? Who did what? Who was here last week? It was such a powerful week. I expect to hear a lot of testimonies. You unmute before you speak. If you want to say something, you unmute and then you speak. Rabbi. Oh, Rabbi is not connected. I'm here, I'm connected. Oh, are you able to do a little yeah. recap? recap of last week just in case uh, some people are not this. there the internet is very very unstable i don't know if we'll be able to go through just briefly latania praise the lord while waiting for Rabbi, to to come up with a, a little brief recap. Yes, like We're not here. Uh, a lot is going on in Uganda recently. Uh, the president, there's a bill about the LGBTQ, and it is really causing a lot of uh, controversy out there. Um, the people who are promoting seem to be very, very intentional about their focus on the African nations. And the president of Uganda doesn't think it is part of his culture. And so he's standing to protect his culture. And he doesn't think that uh, the homosexuality is part of his African culture. He believes that it's something you do behind your door, whatever you're doing sexually shouldn't be put on people's face. And so a bill has been passed in parliament and there's a lot of debate on that. 
And I think we have to pray. As Christians, we know that the Bible is completely against sodomy. So for we are the my also the, the minority people, we have a right, you know, for what we believe to uphold it. So it is our responsibility to pray because the needs that we have in Uganda from what we saw has nothing to do with people's uh, sexual orientation. And uh, the condition of helping people should not be tied to that. But then we believe that God is the one that gives help. And so what God wants is what uh, the people of Uganda are ready to stand for. So I don't know if anybody has, uh, has been listening to the news from Uganda to tell us what is going on in that area. Anybody from Uganda who's been listening or in the diaspora, maybe you want to give us heads up on what is going on in that area so we can pray. Yeah. Uh, good, good afternoon. Uh, uh, good morning for US team and good, good evening for Uganda team. Uh, I would like to thank all of you for what you have been doing praying for Uganda. And uh, the good news is that uh, the parliament of Uganda decided, the, the president first decided, and then uh, the parliament also decided, and they all you know, passed the bill against homosexuality. And uh, the president yesterday signed, he signed the bill. Mm. So it is, um, uh, it's already signed. Mm. The president said he cannot compromise. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I, I see a lot of threats from America. Yes. yes. Against uh, the Uganda. The news on the in the white news from the white house and a lot of uh, threats in that yes. direction yes i believe that um, we have a god yes and god is almighty he's all powerful amen. and he's um omnipresent amen god is omnipotent which means he's all powerful his omniscience means he knows it all and he's present and Amen. he is just George. I want us to take the case of Uganda to the court of heaven. Uh, uh, I want somebody to open uh, the book of Daniel chapter seven, verse 21. We are going to pray. We're going to pray before we start off today. Yeah. Uh, uh, as we are also going to begin to pray, I want to also uh, inform you that uh, we have been, uh, Bishop, Bishop Moses uh, announced, mm -hmm. has been in prayer for one week, for seven days, he finished mm -hmm. last evening. And uh, he has announced uh, uh, the whole month of April to be a month of a national fast prayer and fasting. Amen. Yeah, so, yes. yes, so we need to commit also that unto the Lord. Amen. We are going to pray. Um, yeah, uh, you, uh, you have heard what our sister is saying from Uganda. This platform is for Uganda. That's why we need to hear what is going on in Uganda. So we pray uh, on point with precision. You know, you don't want things to happen and pass, then you come and start praying in the past tense. You want to be current with what is happening, then you go ahead. You understand? So Daniel chapter 7, verse 21, it says, let me just start from verse 20. It said, I also 
wanted to know about the 10 horns, the, the 10 horns on its head and about the other horn that came up before which three of them fell. The horn that looked more imposing than the others and that had eyes and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I watched this horn was waging war against the saints. That's where I want, then the place I want us to note. As I watched, this horn was waging war against the saints and defeating them until the ancient of days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the most high. And the time came when they possessed the kingdom. Amen. I want everybody to unmute because we are going to pray together. And after that, I don't know if, uh, who is the last sister who spoke? What's your name, sis? Sister Jane? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we are going to pray together for Uganda, holding this word. The Bible says the, the horn was waging war and prevailing until the ancient of days showed up. And then the time came, the ancient of days came uh, and pronounced judgment in favor of the saints of the Most High. The enemy is waging war. This war is not even against Uganda. It's against the saints. It's against the word of God. It's against what the Bible you know, stands for. I remember the one time that the Lord angrily destroyed the whole country was because of uh, Sodomy. You know, when Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. And now it is kind of a plot to destroy the whole world, to cause God's anger. But the Bible says God is looking for one man to stand in the gap, but he has found one nation, that is Uganda. So I want us to pray that the Lord should see that these nations are waging war against Uganda because he is the one president that is very vocal. The other day I listened to Ghana. Ghana is coming up strong because when Uganda stands, all the other countries in Africa will begin to have the courage to stand. They're always looking for one person who will build the cart so that people can come out and you know follow suit. So Uganda have, the, the president have put his neck out there and he's not even kidding. So I want us to pray that and tell the Lord that the horns are waging, they are waging war and they seem to be prevailing because they are the majority. All the countries, other countries are rising up to fight against Uganda. You can see the United Nations, they are all waging war. So we're going to bring this case to the court of heaven and say, let the righteous judge defend the Uganda and the head of state of Uganda and all the people, both black and white, who are supporting this move of God. So put on mute your phone and let's hold on to Daniel chapter 7, verse 21 and pray. After that, Sister Jane will emphasize for us. Let us unmute. Mute your phone and pray together. Father, we thank you so much for opening our eyes to see in this season. Bless you, Lord, that what is going on in Uganda calls for international attention. Bless you for a nation whose God is the Lord. We know that there are people inside and outside. We pray. That Lord, so as the horns you. are prevailing, because as the, the horns are coming. rising against yeah. this in nation, court of heaven, I pray the in the name coming. of the Lord Jesus and that the is given to us of the saints in the most high. We bring the, the case of God the saints of homosexuality God. and sodomy. So, God in Uganda right was, now, we take it from the was, hand. Yes, okay, men. And we bless you in the court of heaven. You are a righteous judge. And so, Father, we pray that you would judge in your righteousness. 
Jesus. Judge in your righteousness. Their horns they put up against the saints, against the nations, against the nations. the nations of the world. That that you are to is but that this now. battle is not against Uganda. And it, it is not against Africa. It is against the people of God. It is even against you. Father, the nations say. are gathered against you. And the Bible says you and you laugh. So show up, oh God, God. And let the world know that there is a God who rules over there. And rise, oh God. Let your enemies be scattered. Let God arise. Be Enemy be scattered. We pray for protection over the president of Uganda. We pray for protection over the parliament of Uganda. I raise the standard. Oh God, over the standard of the whole state. In the name of Jesus, we ask that you put a hedge of fire around them and around the states of Uganda that no weapon formed against them will prosper. Arise no the no day of manifestation. Arise and manifest your power. Yes. Oh God, you, you say you will contend with those who contend with you and you will fight that. against those who fight. The Father, victory of the Lord will be battle is yours. You crush the enemy and bruise him under our feet. Let your kingdom come. Thank you, Lord. Lord. In the Uganda, enemy is destined to be used at our feet. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Because you the powers of darkness are determined. We have been destroyed, confounded in the name above every name, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord, that the ancient of days day sits on the throne and the throne mm. of judgment. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Lord, that you, you are the righteous judge and the judge of all the earth. Yes. And you will judge righteously on yes. behalf of your children. Yes, you will sir. prevail because you have started a good work in us and you will complete it. We are not the losers. Mm -hmm. We are not the defeated ones. We are more than conquerors through Christ mm -hmm. Jesus, the ancient Amen. of days. Glory Thank be you to Lord. you forever and ever. Amen. 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 Thank you very much, man of God. Hmm. Hallelujah. I think our pastor has already prayed and emphasized on that point. We give God the glory. The battle is the Lord's. You know, any anybody who can battle with the Lord should continue with that battle. He will going to see the wrath of God and uh, we will just see the victory. We have placed it in his hands. We thank God for that. I don't know if Rabbi Smith is ready with the recap. The network is very bad in his area. Anyway, I just... Uh, believe that uh, last week we were still looking at the crippling spirit in Uganda and how the culture has actually crippled uh, the continent and especially Uganda. And uh, Rabbi Smith gave an extensive explanation. If you were not there last week, just go and watch the video for last, last week and you will be able to have a deep understanding because today we are moving forward. Hallelujah. Today, I want us to, to look at this crippling spirit from another angle. We have seen how the culture has crippled the people. We have seen God give us an, an understanding that the women, most especially, have been crippled by the culture. And uh, we have seen all the proofs and confirmations all around that it's not just the women, it's even the men. It's not just the men, it's the church. It's not even the church, it's the continent. So the culture, the African culture itself is not even to our advantage. It has a different kingdom that um, is operational. And that's why when we started these teachings in Uganda, the Lord said, let his kingdom come and let his will be done in Uganda as it is in heaven. 
So if the Lord is saying, let his kingdom come and let his will be done, it means there is another kingdom that is ruling and there's a will of another that is dominating. And we saw clearly that it is the will of the culture of whoever established the culture that is being done. And it is the traditional kingdom that is predominant in Uganda. And we saw it even in the church. We saw the effects of that kingdom even inside the church. And so today we are going to look again into um, the situation in Uganda. But before that, I saw somebody like Prophet Estaranda putting up her hand. Do you want to say something, Prophetess? I see a hand up there. I also see Sister Betty greeting. Are you on, Mama? That was my accident, um, uh, about Pauline. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I don't know if maybe did you want to say something? I saw your hand. No, ma'am. I, I hit it by accident. Okay, okay, I understand. Right. Praise the Lord. Okay, I saw Mother Betty's hand up too. Do you want to say something before we start? Okay, praise the Lord. Uh -huh. One of the things our sister said was um, to pray for the one month of fasting and prayer that has been declared by um, our bishop our general overseer. So the month of April, from April 1, you understand, to April 30th will be a month of fasting and prayer. So if you forget everything, don't forget that you choose to fast according to the grace that the Lord has given you. If you want to do a complete fast, good. If you want to do a partial fast, good, but make sure you fast. I believe that uh, we'll be putting out the prayer topics as the month rolls by. Hallelujah. So back to our lesson, I was saying that we saw how the culture is actually the kingdom that is ruling in Uganda and how it has affected the church, that even the church, some of the, 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 the practices, even the interpretations of the church is kind of, cultural, it's more cultural than spiritual. And uh, we saw how it has reduced the Ugandan woman to a beggar. And we saw that even the whole continent have been reduced to begging and it's the, the culture that has crippled them to that point. As I was meditating on that, the Lord was showing me that the church has also crippled the people. So the church is also a crippling spirit to an extent because when you run away from tradition and you go to the church, you are expecting to have freedom. When you give your life to Christ, you become born again and you, you get into the church, you experience a little bit of freedom. But then even in the church, that freedom has been tampered with and instead of spiritual development people go to church and they turn out to become religious so we're going to look at how the church has crippled um, the women and the intercessors in Uganda we're using Uganda to look at the continent as a whole and the people of God in general so today we'll be reading from the book of Revelations. You know, the book of Revelation is the last book of the Bible. So I want us to open to Revelations chapter 2 and let somebody else out there read. So I know that I'm not talking to myself. We're going to read Revelations chapter 2 from verse 12 to 17. Revelations 2. 12 to 17. I Jedi, I will read from verse 12 to verse 17. Yes, ma'am. 
Then to the angel of the assembly church in Pagamon, write. These are the words of him who has and wills the sharp two-edged sword. I know where you live, a place where Satan sits and thrones. Yet you are clinging to and holding fast to my name. And you did not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one, who was killed in your midst where Satan dwells. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have some people there who are clinging to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to set a trap and a stumbling block before the sons of Israel to entice them to eat food that has been sacrificed to idols and to practice lewdness, giving themselves up to sexual vice. You also have some who in a similar way are clinging to the teaching of the Nicolaitans, those corrupted mm -hmm. corruptors of the people, which things I hate, repent then, or else I will come to you quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who is able to hear, let him listen to and heed what the spirit says to the assembly churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat the manna that is hidden and I'll give him a white stone with a new name engraved on the stone, which no one knows or understands except he who receives it. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, sister. You know, in the passage our sister just read, the Lord is saying that uh, he's revealing to us that the foundation of the church needs to be revisited. We need to revisit even the foundation. He said, Satan does not only visit from time to time, he actually has a throne. So I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. So the church is the compromising church. If you look at the church very well, you will see compromise. I remember when uh, Sister Betty and her husband they were doing the campaigns. Even last week when I was listening to the video, he was telling me about the way uh, elections campaign is being done in the church was almost the same way it is done in the world. People go out to bribe, to corrupt, in order to be voted in a Christian setup. So we see that the church already from birth, from its inception, right deep down, is already crippled because Satan has established his own throne right inside the church. Say, so I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. And if you want to argue, I'll continue to explain and you begin to look in your own church where you are. Because a throne is like a ceremonial chair for a, a sovereign, a sovereignty, for a bishop, somebody who is present and is seated there. I know a lot of people talk about church hurts. Now, when they go to church, they even leave wounded. Sometimes you are so skeptical. And when you look at the body of Christ, you, you will attest to the fact that Satan has entered the church, if you want to be honest. So you, you run from the culture to the church, but you are also going to be crippled by religion in the church. So this means that um, Satan, like we have Bishop Odongo in Uganda, Satan is a co-bishop in the church. And so he has to be acknowledged, recognized, and dealt with and removed in that place. If we want God's kingdom to come, we, we should not just be struggling to shy away from it. We have to address it in the church in Uganda. It says the teachings of, um, say this, we, uh, he talks about, nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teachings of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food sacrificed to idols, you know, idolatry. You see, idolatry, we're showing we, tradition is just 
another word for idolatry. We see it entering right inside the church. And when you look inside the church, you discover that people now idolize their pastors. Pastors have become idols. They have become papas. Their word is law, even when they are wrong. Because nobody goes back to the word of God. The Holy Spirit, who is supposed to be the leader of the church, you know, have lost his place to people, to men. And so every church is struggling to have a first lady, a, a second lady, a pastor, and so on. There's a lot of disorder right in the foundation because man has taken over from God, you know. And so there's idolatry going on. There is sexual immorality like you cannot imagine. When you look at the rate at which there's sexual perversion in the church, you will be so surprised. You understand? Sexual perversion is so, you can't even, you can't even just imagine it in the church. There are, I, I spoke to some women. The last time I was there, I had the opportunity to talk one-on-one -on -one with some sisters for a few minutes. And you could tell they testifying how pastors have uh, two wives and there's another wife hiding somewhere. But the, 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 the wife, the main wife of the pastor cannot even say it. She has to hide it for the sake of the work. Which work? Which work are you doing? What is the work? Is it just a ceremonial ground where people just come and gather and do some work in the name of the Lord? No, it is a place where we come to read the word and obey what the Lord has asked us to do. But now, if the pastor himself is polygamous in the church with sexual immorality in his own life, what do you expect the entire congregation? Every other, that spirit will come on the people. Why? Because the foundation itself is established on sexual immorality. The throne of Satan is in that church. I also learned about, uh, I was there with Prophet Esteranda when, when we were waiting on the Lord for her day of ministration. She, she said, the Lord said there's incest in the church, a lot of incest. Fathers sleeping with their biological children and spiritual fathers sleeping with their spiritual children. And she rebuked the church in Uganda very powerfully. Some men of God were really repentant and praying. But when you are in a church like that and you're an intercessor and a woman, you're already crippled in your spirit. If your husband is the pastor and you cannot speak and you're an intercessor, you just be praying or leading the women to pray from a place of desperation. So you are already crippled because of the church. So the church helps to cripple us even more than we know. You know, they, 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 they talk about um, sexual immorality, idolatry, and the doctrine of Balaam. There's a lot going on inside the church. Balaam, you need to, you need to pay him money to tell you what you want to hear. And that's what is going on in the church. Everybody's running right, left, and center, looking for prophets, for prophets. God gave prophets in the church to be a blessing, to give direction, to edify. But people go there and twist their mouths, just like uh, Balaam, for you to prophesy according to that which will satisfy them. And so instead of waiting on the Lord, to give direction to the church, the prophets are out there making their money. Because why? People want to hear. You, you understand? So that is what is going on in the church. We have to be objective and look at it. Then is ask yourself, is it building or it is crippling? The church is sick. The church is sick. He says, I will build my church, but the gates of hell shall not prevail. But we see the gates of hell prevailing, which means he is not the one building. We have taken over.
the building of the church from him. The teachings of the Nicolaitans, this has to do with control, possessiveness, which are the root at the root of denominational, uh, denominationalism. You know, the denominational barriers. I've never seen such hatred, you know, manifested like people moving from belonging to one church and the other one in a, the other church is a big problem. People are, are, are so committed to their denomination more than they are committed to the God of the church. So they know the, 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 the denomination more than they know uh, the Holy Spirit who is supposed to be in the center of it all. And that is the, the doctrine of Balaam, which is where the, the Nicolaitan, which is division. And that's, that, that, that's the root of factions in the church. That's the root of, of, of groups. So you see inside the church, the husband and the wife are already divided. The mother is going one way. The father is going the other way. The children are going their own way. The intercessors are in their own group. The inside one denomination already divided. Why? Because Satan has his throne right inside the church. So these are the things that uh, have been enumerated in this, this one passage. So if you look into your church, where you belong, you are going to see either sexual immorality or you are going to see division or you are going to see idolatry. I put them under these three headings. When you see these three operating in your church, don't shy away from it. Don't pretend and say, oh, it's a work of God. I don't want to say this. I don't. Mm -mm. It's a problem. It's a sign that Satan has established his throne inside that church where you belong. And when you look at the global church, you begin to see the church in Africa. You begin to see this very predominant. Sometimes I'm just so ashamed to introduce myself abroad as a pastor from Africa. Because the next thing, people they think you, you are here to look for money. They like, oh, they don't even, they just know that we are here to beg. Why? Because even in the church, that crippling has entered. Such that even if you carry the sound word, you know, you are, you, 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 are, you are ashamed to even bring it out because you don't want to identify with the spirit, the crippling spirit that has entered even the church. And when you look down right inside the foundation, when Christianity and so on was brought even to the continent, they brought it was first of all twisted from the foundation you know with some idols gave you pictures of mary joseph you know a white man on the cross white woman and carrying a baby so you are already distorted from the foundation and then you start thinking that god is so far away whereas god is very 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 near us so I was looking, I, I hope a rabbi is able to listen to what I'm saying. We need to begin to go back to the foundation of the church in Uganda, which is the heart of Africa. We need to begin to look at it through God's eyes because the Lord said the church is a compromising church and we see that Satan has his throne. Now, two thrones cannot sit in one church. We have to, first of all, acknowledge that it is a problem. And then we have to start praying that the pastors will begin to see that it's a problem. And then we have to start addressing the problem by dethroning Satan from the throne in your individual denominations and in the country as a whole. The Lord has given us the mystery of the altar, how to alter any ungodly altar so that we can go down to the root and lay a better foundation onto the God of heaven, led by the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit alone, because the church needs help. Co-bishop Satan has established his throne. And that's what the Bible says. So I just want to throw that in, that that is an area we need to exploit. You know, I just bring the revelation and put it out there and then we discuss, and then we start looking at the way forward. How do we deal with this? 
So the floor is open. I just want everybody to respond. We are all people of God. Like I said, this platform is not one person coming to tell us everything. We have bishops here. We have uh, uh, apostles here. We have pastors. It's a mature platform. So this is open for discussion. If we want God to move in the church, we have to face the reality and address the compromising uh, spirit that is predominant in the church properly. Then we'll be able to have a church that manifests the power of God that can be able to face the challenges that are coming to attack the church. So the floor is open over to you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Sorry, I came in a bit late. It's okay. Uh, logged in late. We're coming back. We had just arrived home when it's already passed. Past eight mm. when you already started. But we thank God for journey masses. Amen. You know, after my elections, on 16th, on 17th, the Lord spoke to me. Because already people had begun inviting me. They want me in this meeting. They're opening this church. They want to see me. But I thank God that at 9 p.m. on Friday, the Lord spoke to me and said, before you see the face of man, you must come and seek my face. And he showed me a place away, far away from Kampala. And uh, we went there with a smaller team. And we have been there for seven days, praying and fasting and waiting upon the Lord. Mm. So we have just returned back to Kampala. It yeah. has been a tremendous time in the presence of the Lord. The Lord instructing. It's like Moses going to the top of the mountain and God giving the tablets and the plan mm. of the tabernacle. It is more or less yeah. like that. Because he has showed me things. He has spoken to me. It is there. When I first went, that's when he talked to me about calling a, a corporate national prayers in Apple. Yeah. That is where I, that's the first person I received. And um, yeah. I want to thank you for adding your voice, Apostle, just to yeah. call all our Ugandan people. And then they were outside there just to stand with Uganda because there is a plan. God has a plan. When yeah. God was telling me to call these prayers, He was saying, out of these corporate prayers, we can build. You can release an apostolic anointing, apostolic grace and authority. That is going mm. to be necessary for, 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 for doing a lot of things in Uganda. And so we are just in obedience. I'm thanking God that a number of leaders here have embraced. But just to go on to talk about the, the kind of God, another bishop in the church, Bishop Saturn in the church. <laughs> it, it is so interesting, I'm telling you in Uganda. Already now, there is an issue of who is calling for these prayers. Apart from people worshiping their denomination, there is the worship of a pastor. Mm -hmm. who's, who's the pastor saying that? And then the pastor himself, is he saying, but who is that other person calling if it's not me? Mm -hmm. Some people are already you know, keeping quiet. They're already beginning to sideline the prayers, fasting for what? And yet God, in that message, when I wrote it to circulate it, the, the people, it is very clear. We are praying for the family. We are praying for the church. We are praying for our nation. Because God wants to, God wants to, to prepare us for the move of God through the church in Uganda. There is the move of God that's supposed to be released and that's supposed to be started, but through the church in Uganda. The church is supposed to be in the forefront of it in this country of Uganda, which I know will overlap to East Africa, Africa, and then eventually we are able to send missionaries even to the West. So on that topic of another, you know, the compromise in the church is so bad. Yeah. But also on the positive ground, I really want us to thank God. 
my election is sending people to learn lessons. They are seeing yeah. the Bible into operation. They are seeing this little young man just coming up and saying, God told me, full stop. And then it's moving, started in weakness, weakness. They are minimizing him, but at the end of it, God's hand is seen. People are yeah. learning a lot of lessons. And uh, a number of pastors, such leaders are saying, God has spoken to us. God is calling us back. God is calling us back to the place of hearing. So we yeah. pray that may God's message sink deep in the hearts of the past and cause transformation. Because there's something that is evident in this election that has just taken place. While we are in the campaigns, I was doing my campaigns differently from, especially one of my chief competitor, uh, my mm -hmm. chief competitor. For him, he would go around, bribe and lie and demean and, uh, and mad sling all of us and uh, Bishop Luere, the incumbent. For me, I would go and never talk about any of them and just share the scriptures. I lead the pastors in prayers. And then I share a bit about my background and the, and the things I want to do for the fellowship, the church. And that is it. We go away. So they would just wonder, wow, you, you just come and never talk about anybody? You know. Yeah. So I, I made a difference. And it is very clear. Everyone sees it. So thank you very much for sharing on this scripture. I pray that we Ugandans who are on this platform, we need to allow God to listen to what the Spirit of God is saying in the church and intentionally mm -hmm. determine to make a difference. Because incest, sexual immorality, leave alone just that it is the, the kind of sexual immorality. It is coming from the head and so if the pastor is doing it, then when, the, when these other members are doing it, nobody will say to them, I think mm -hmm. so bad, but, but God, is, God is helping us. Mm. God is helping us. So thank you. I needed to say that. I just appreciate you all for coming and continuing to be in, mm. this, in this WhatsApp group. Let's continue. Mm. I have believed the word of God that God can mm. save even with a simo army. He can save, no. he can save, he can help. So we may start small, yeah. but I also believe in the power of God amplifying the four, I mean, the feet of the lepers. Stepping no. down in weakness, but God amplified their feet and a huge Assyrian army had it like chariots and they ran away. I believe yeah. we don't need to have everyone on board. It is like this mm -hmm. prayer and fasting. The people will hear the voice of God and go by it, we shall pray as a nation. Hmm. I don't know how it is safe for me to share some quite deep, some pertinent things God talk, told me about this prayer and fasting. I don't know how safe this WhatsApp group is. I don't know who hmm. else caps it. Hmm. I don't know whether it is safe, Apostle. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> we are on a platform and uh, everyone here is I think matured enough, but if you are not comfortable in your spirit, then we can talk later. I will talk it with any, we'll see how to share it with the rest. Yes. Yes, let's this share prayer, later. This prayer and fasting for Apple is so strategic, according to God, so strategic. I will share details. But thank you. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. You're welcome. You're welcome, man of God. We, we thank God for your life and we thank God for the fact that you stand for like Josiah. When I was praying for you, the Lord told me that you have the same assignment that Josiah had. Yes, we, ha we have to pray uh, for the children, for the nation. We have a lot of challenges, but we have to clean the church first. The church has to be swept clean. We need to remove Satan's seat from there. Mm -hmm. Satan cannot be sitting side by side. If you go to Ezekiel chapter 8, it will tell you there's a story in Ezekiel. I think we should read it so that we know that what we are facing, this is not the first time. It has happened before. And the Lord doesn't want us to continue in that light because Satan finds his way to carry his business into the church. 
from time immemorial. And I'm going to read from uh, Ezekiel chapter eight. It says, idolatry in the temple. In the sixth year, the sixth month on the fifth day, while I was sitting in my house and the elders of Judah were sitting before me. This is Ezekiel speaking. We're sitting before me. I looked and I saw a figure like that of a man from what appeared to me to be his waist down, down. He was like fire and from there up his appearance was as bright as glowing metal. He stretched out what looked like a hand and took me by the hair of my head. The spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven. And in visions of God, he took me to Jerusalem, to the entrance to the north gate of the inner court, where the idol that provokes to jealousy stood. And there before me was the glory of the God of Israel, as in the vision I had seen in the plain. Then he said to me, son of man, look towards the north. So I looked, and in the entrance north of the gate of the altar, I saw this idol of jealousy, and he said to me, son of man, do you see what they are doing? The utterly detestable things the house of Israel is doing here, things that will drive me far away from my sanctuary. But you will see things that are even more detestable. Then he brought me to the entrance to the court. I looked and I saw a hole in the wall. He said to me, son of man, now dig into the wall. So I dug into the wall and saw a doorway there. And he said to me, go in and see the wicked and detestable things they are doing here. So I went in and looked and I saw portrait all over the wall, all kinds of crawling things and detestable animals and all the idols of the house of Israel. In front of them stood 70 elders, 70 elders of the house of Israel. And Jazaniah, son of Shaphan, was standing among them. Each had a censer in his hand, and a fragrant cloud of incense was rising. He said to me, son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the darkness? Each at the shrine of his own idol. They say the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. Again, he said, you will see them doing things that are even more detestable. Then he brought me to the entrance, to the north gate of the house of the Lord. And I saw women sitting there mourning for Tammuz. Tammuz was a god. He said to me, do you see this son of man? You will see things that are even more detestable than this. He then brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord. And there at the entrance to the temple between the portico and the altar were about 25 men with their backs towards the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east. They were bowing down to the sun in the east. He said to me, have you seen this son of man? Is it a trivial matter for the house of Judah to do the detestable things they are doing here? Must they also fill the land with violence and continually provoke me to anger? Look at them putting the branch to their nose. Therefore, I will deal with them in anger. I will not look on them with pity or spare them. Although they shout in my ears, I will not listen to them. So the situation... I am so sorry. Can you hear me now? Can you all hear me now? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we yes, can. We do. Okay, I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, something disconnected me. The, the devil is mad at what I'm saying. Um, the situation in the church now is the same as it was in the days of Ezekiel. And God had to grab Ezekiel's head 
from the religious ordinary activities they used to do. We are so used to all oh, praise and worship. After that uh, Bible reading, after that a word, after that prophecy, after that tithe and offering and we go home. We have to stop that. It is about time we begin to wait on the Lord, like pastor is saying. And when we wait and come with revelations, God begins to show us the holes that are in the walls, the people who are practicing witchcraft right inside the church, like these elders. The Lord is saying there's a lot going on inside the church. We are looking for witches outside. They are right in there. And that has to be dealt with. If not, we continue shouting, he will not answer. So what's the point? Praying and going around doing prayer programs and mobilizing and praying when God will not answer. So God wants the church to be cleansed. He wants purification. He wants a cleansing. If we look at chapter nine, the Bible says idolaters were killed. Ezekiel chapter nine, if we continue from there. Say, then I heard him call out in a loud voice, bring the guards of the city here, each with a weapon in his hand. And I saw six men coming from the direction of the upper gate, which faces north, each with a deadly weapon in his hand. With them was a man clothed in linen who had a writing kit at his side. They came in and stood beside the bronze altar. Now the glory of the God of Israel went up from above the cherubim where it had been above, been moved to the threshold of the temple. Then the Lord called to the man clothed in linen who had the writing kit at his side and said to him, go throughout the city of Jerusalem and put a mark on the forehead of those who grieve and lament over all the detestable things that are done in it. God is going to put a mark on all who are really lamenting, who are angry about all these detestable and abominable things that are happening in the church. The Bible says, as I listen, he said to the, to the others, follow him through the city and kill without showing pity or compassion. Slaughter all men, young men and maidens, women and children, but do not touch anyone who has the mark. Begin at my sanctuary. So they began with the elders who were in front of the temple. So God can kill. And I'm telling you to cleanse that temple, God is going to, people are going to drop dead because this is serious business. We, have, we are being threatened by the homosexual agenda. We have China coming with a dragon. We have Islam coming with Boko Haram. Then we have our own African traditional religion. So there are four giants heading towards the church. And the church has to be empowered to fight. So what happens is the devil does everything to make the church weak, reduce it into a religious platform without any power so that he can have the nation you know, at his neck. It is an abomination for some few people to rise up and they are putting the homosexual agenda right down our throat. Whereas we learned in those days when we got saved, that you cannot even commit immorality in the church. They will put you out back at the back of the bench, hand you over to Satan. But now they have bypassed that until they are promoting homosexuality inside the church. It is happening and we are looking at it. So if God is calling Reverend Moses in this season and calling us to come from other nations, calling rootless nations to join, it is not to continue with religion, no. It is a season of cleansing the church for the demonstration of God's power. I remember in the Acts of the Apostle, one man came in there and told a lie. He fell down right there and died. His wife came and told a very lie and they buried the two of them the same day. That is a power that God wants to bring back to the church. And that is a priority. That is God's priority in Uganda. It's not just another religious activity. No, 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 no. It is the return of God's power. And I'm telling you, it's going to kill some people right inside the church if we don't help the church to repent. Because God is not happy with the church. Everything that is happening out there, 
politically, with the occultic powers, God puts the church, you know, he blames the church for it. Because he says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their own wicked ways, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins and I will heal the land. So the fate of the land is not in the hands of the politicians. It's not even in the hands of, oh, you, 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 you know, the parliamentarians and so on. It is in the church. But unfortunately, the church has been crippled and reduced to a religious activity. You understand? Or ceremonial activities like in the days of the Pharisees. So if God is calling a man of God in the heart of Africa to rise up in this season, it is because he wants to repair the church beginning from the heart. We all know that Uganda is the heart of the continent. So God wants to repair the heart so that the whole body can receive fresh blood pumping, you know, freely. And so that's my take on that. Uh, thank you, Bishop, for your reaction. I was just reacting to what you said. The floor is open. Let's talk about this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the scripture. Hello. Yes, please. I have a conviction that this is the right direction to go. Amen. When, when prayer is called uh, by God through his servant Odong, because people ask me, how did you people win? I say, no, our team was full of prayer. Mm -hmm. We prayed every step. We prayed for money to come in, we prayed for protection as we moved around for wisdom. And the uh, bishop humbled himself always. He knelt before the, the voters uh, in humility. So I think prayer with humility carry a lot. Mm. Uh, we're going to not expect that everyone is going to say yes. Uh, there are people who, who definitely will say no. That is not God talking, uh, but uh, always a remnant. Those who you have put it, the mark is put on the on them. Mm -hmm. Are the very ones who will catch the fire? Because I know when God co called the disciples to go to the nations, uh, He told them first go to the upper room. Mm -hmm. I don't see anything wrong if God told the, Jesus told the disciples first to go to the upper room before you begin a business. Yeah. That's the way to go. Mm -hmm. I don't see uh, this not biblical because even when Paul and his team uh, were wanting to go their own direction, the Holy Spirit told them that go to Macedonia, but they yeah. first went to pray. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a good foundation for the work God has put on our, our shoulders in Uganda. We begin with the prayer mm -hmm. because prayer reorganizes everything. Prayer brings the anointing. Prayer brings uh, the fire from above. So I think it's just that we stand on God's word and will that we are laying a foundation through prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, the journey is long, uh, but we, we need first to go to the mountain. Mm -hmm. That's what God told Elijah also. Mm -hmm. uh, I see it parallel to Nehemiah. Mm -hmm. Nehemiah, his leadership began with a prayer. Mm -hmm. And he led through prayer. Before he mobilized a team, prayer. Before Jesus picked his 12, prayer. Yeah. So I think everything is in line with, the, with, with God's direction. So I have no question about it. It is the right direction. There are many mountains that uh, have to be claimed by prayer and faith. 
Uh, before we possess them, as Bishop Odong will put it, before you meet the people, you meet me first. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need that. that that's what is needed. Mm. Uh, before we go to make projects, contact the government officials or whatever, the, we need first to pray. Nehemiah, every step was, let me first. He prayed first. He prayed first. When opposition came, he prayed. When he, or, or the team was discouraged, he prayed. When opposition came, he prayed. So you, you, that pattern is what we need in our management, the leadership that God is committing to our hands. There are those who lead by prayer. There are those who manage by prayer, but there are those who manage by human wisdom. Yeah. There are those who, who manage and boast in their academic uh, capacity or human skills they have. Mm -hmm. Let's not go that way. Let's go the way that we first go inquire from the Lord. Should we go this direction or no? He knows how to lead us by the Holy Spirit. Mm. I think that's my contribution. Thank you very much, Bishop. That is, that is just the way to go. We don't even have any other way. This platform was even created to disciple the intercessors, you know, that bring discipline in the, in the area of prayer. And uh, we have seen God because it started just in our face when uh, Bishop uh, Odongo was saying he wanted to, to start, you know, to put his candidature. It's not just even long ago. And uh, he started with prayer. We've been praying. I saw the wife mobilize and we, the victory is right here. So without any shadow of a doubt, God has given us a testimony that prayer works. Now that we have won, the church is in our hands. God wants us to sweep the house before we continue praying. You know, we have to start sweeping the house. We have to start praying for the church because the church needs help. So I, I am Amen. suggesting very seriously that during these 30 days of fasting and praying, we should begin to address the things that God have exposed in the church. The spirit of immorality, the spirit of idolatry, and the spirit of di division. These things, the Bible says, it will drive God away from his temple. And now if we come and sit and we are praying and God is not in the temple, we are really just burning our energy for nothing. So the, God has given Bishop Odongo the platform and brought all of us from different countries to join with him to begin to clear the temple. And God's power again will return because it is the power of God that we, 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 we will move and threaten the people out there when they see God's power moving, like in the days of Moses, when he opened the Red Sea and people crossed on dry land, the news went ahead. When he commanded the walls of Jericho through praise and it fell, came crumbling down, the fear of God gripped the people. So it is that kind of manifestation that will follow in the church. The days of just praying and seeing answers without the demonstration of power they are giving way because God wants to demonstrate his power like the world have never known before. You know, he wants to bring back that two witnesses, the same power that was in the days of Moses. He wants to bring it back in our time. But we have to focus on the church and ask God, if your church is practicing immorality, if your pastor is one of those promoting immorality, don't religiously address it. You have to ask God, what do I do? And he tells you, make sure you do it because God wants to clean the church. You understand? Those things start with your own congregation because we know what is going on. We know, but we just stay away. No, 
that is being a coward. It's time to call down the fire like in the days of Elijah to cleanse the, the, the deal with the prophets of Baal so that the power of God will return and run through the land. Those people who are asking, who, who asked the people to pray? Who's, who is the one who, and who gave the instructions for the prayer? They will not ask anymore because when the power of God hit them where they are, they will just join the chorus. So thank you very much, Pastor, for your contribution. The floor is open, the floor is open. Uh, let me just, uh, just confirm the word you're sharing about cleansing the church. <clears throat> First of all, even before I knew I would contest and stand for general overseer, I've been a pastor that people, other pastors report cases in their churches, believers. I take it up with the other pastors, mobilize them. They fear to chair those meetings, to take those stands. So I'm always in the forefront chairing those meetings. I'm going to church and sitting pastors down. Mm -hmm. I pray, mm -hmm. I need prayers for this time. Surely mm -hmm. I have a platform. I just need the wisdom to go about it. Mm -hmm. But then mm -hmm. in these prayers, one of my team members the other night shared with me this morning <laughs> the kind of dream she got. Mm -hmm. She said she saw me in a big church. But this church had that on the pulpit. Mm. So they invited me to go to the pulpit, but the pulpit was so dirty. Mm. But when I stood on the pulpit, water gushed out from the walls all over the church. Water mm. just gushed out mm. and came and swept all the dirt. Before I could know the church, the pulpit where I was standing was clean. Mm. I'm just saying this to confirm what the Lord is speaking, the Spirit of God is saying through you. Mm -hmm. For us and church to understand mm -hmm. the direction that God is calling us, the mandate of this leadership term he has given us. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to fact bring in that aspect so that we relate mm -hmm. with that message. Praise the Lord. Uh, whoever saw that revelation so well, because God is giving you the anointing of Josiah to cleanse the temple. When you saw water gushing out, it's because you are going to, to stand and bring the people to repentance. Where people don't address, you are going to go there with grace. You know, last week, the Lord was talking to us about the grace, the graciousness of God and uh, the rock in the foundation because God is bringing people who will support you. You understand? Sometimes when they talk about support, many people are only thinking of financial support. Financial support is the least of the support. The most important support we need is more spiritual. Finances is the lower currency. The higher currency is the spirit realm. And so God is going to open the realms for you to have the, the, the wisdom that you need to deal with every church. You know, God has put you in a place where you have access. Now, they, you are not requesting to go. The people are calling. So wherever you stand, that water will gush out. Why? Because you have a humble spirit and you are listening to other people. So we are going to pray. We are going to end up this this uh, platform with prayers for Bishop Odongo. You understand that? He needs wisdom, the kind of wisdom and the power of God to return to him and also support system. The people that God has specially prepared. You know, Moses was called, but there was Aaron to hold on his hand and there was all to hold on the other hand. And as long as his hands were lifted, Joshua was winning on the ground. So we're going to pray for him in this direction. I don't know if Sister Jane, the pastor, is there. The lady pastor who spoke earlier on. Are you there? Rabbi, is the rabbi there? It seems she's not there. It seems she's not there. 
Okay, is Rabbi in the house? No. The light, the, the, the electricity in Cameroon is really disturbing. We're now we're standing, we are all going to pray. We're going to pray for Bishop Odongo. We have just three more minutes to close. We're going to lift him up before the throne of God. Thank God for giving him to us. Because the Bible says, God is looking, so if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, what is killing the men and women of God in our time is pride, is pride. So God is just looking for a man who will humble himself and he has found one. But we're going to cry out to God to empower him. These 30 days of fasting, the heavens will be open. Amen. And God will Amen. bring down power like they have never known before. So that when he Amen. begins to stand in those churches, it will not be the oh, same yes. man that stood before. Mm -hmm. It will be a different human being standing. As yeah. he walks in, the glory of God will come. Amen. The, angels will descend. the power of God will be moving when he has not even mm. spoken. So let us just mm. lift up our bishop before God's mm. throne. Let's mm. pray together. Unmute your phone and let us pray. Father, we thank you so oh, much. Yes, Father, we come before you. Our yes, Lord, Lord. Lord. Yes, 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 Lord.
And then he taught them how to catch miraculous. And when those people caught so much abundance of fish, they never went back fishing anymore. Peter started baptizing. The first baptism was 3,000. So when you don't have the finances, the tendency to want to go back to look for money is very eminent because the bills have to be paid. The transportations, the feeding, life has to continue. But when God raised people, when God raised people who will support you financially and you know that God have raised these people to do this work and they are doing it with the fear of God, you can work from a place of rest. So let us pray that God will raise those people and that Bishop Odongo will walk from a place of rest. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you because we are walking on the pages of Yes, we want to thank you because silver and gold and comes from you. We want to thank you, Lord, because you provide. We pray that you will never shame us and never let us down. Don't let Odongo down because there is no financial flow. He needs a comfort zone where he sees the manner flow, where he sees the enlargement from the world. He's caused to be enlarged, and there'll be increase, and there'll be enlargement, and there'll be a multiplication, and there'll be a measure pressed down, shaken together, running over. There it be there in the name of Jesus. That in all the work you're saying, there shall also be signed. Special be provisions, special be heavenly interventions in the name of in the name of Jesus. We declare that you have seasons of blessing, seasons of harvest, seasons of gathering, the loot and spoil. Yes, let there be a season of gathering, the loot and the spoil. In the name of Jesus, for him and his family, and for him and the ministry that you have assigned him in the country, in the name of Jesus. And we just in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Betty on the line. Pastor Betty Odong, are you there? Yes, I'm there. I am around. Okay, I want you to close the line by praying for me. I'm leaving England um, on Wednesday to go back to the United States. So my assignment for England is done and I have to go for the next assignment. So I want you to, to pray for me as we close the service. I have people downstairs waiting for me. I've got to go. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we commit our dear friend and mother and partner in ministry, uh, Apostle Pauline, into your hands. This is the lady that you have separated and put a burden onto her heart for the sake of the nation. She's standing for righteousness of my King of Glory. You have given her a burden for not only Cameroon, not only one country, but all East African countries, oh Lord. Father, we thank you for the work that she's doing, a burden that is on her shoulders for the sake of our nation, oh Lord. Now she has been in uh, uh, Cameroon, oh my King Ogori, mm -hmm. doing great work in Cameroon. And now, Father, mm -hmm. the time has come to return back to England. Father, we pray for protection upon the life of Mama Apostle Pauline. We pray, oh my mm -hmm. King Ogori, Lord, whatever is needed upon her life will you provide. Now that she's mm -hmm. on the front line, oh my King Ogori, the enemy is not happy with her. I plead the blood of Jesus upon her. Because your word in Isaiah 125, right? And those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion that can never be shaken. She has trusted mm -hmm. in you and depending on you, my King of God, in everything that she does. I pray, mm -hmm. Father, the preparation of returning back to UK. Go ahead of her, my King of God, and break every bar. I pull down every powers of darkness that contend with her calling. I contend with every plan mm -hmm. of Jenny McKinney's life in the mighty name of Jesus. I say, 
I lace every tongue from rising mm. again as how my king will glory. Lord, Father, you know the work that your mm. servant, Mama Pauline, is doing, oh Lord. Therefore, my king will mm. glory, we pray for protection. And there is power in the blood of Jesus to overcome the enemy from destroying her life. Father, protect her. We bleed your blood upon her life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. you very Amen. much, sister. Uh, I see somebody like Buembo Stephen. Yes. Oh. Um, did you did you introduce yourself? Yes, your I did. Okay. I did. Okay. So you want I, to close close I, the I line? Come again. I want you to pray and close the service. Okay, thank you. Before I close, uh, give me just a second to say thank you for this wonderful time. Uh, prayer <clears throat> is a blessing uh, to many of us. And I want to thank my bishops, uh, Bishop Podongo and Mama Kuti, for inviting me to join mm. this, this platform. Man. I wouldn't know this uh, an act like this if it was not them. So thank you, Bishop and my Betty. Mm -hmm. And welcome back from prayers. Amen. Thank you. It's so let me you pray. Again. Good to see you, sir. Let's someone pray. What do you even live Thank you. Yes, Mama. I'm saying thank you, Bishop. We Bwebo pray. For you are welcome, us. Mama. Okay. Thank you. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to say thank you for such a wonderful time. It's a blessing for us to join and together in this platform, King of Glory. You knew that you will need a, such a time of repression like this. And they used your servants who began and established the prayer altar. Father, we say thank you. Thank you for using them. Thank you for using them, organizing each and every one of us, connecting the nations and the people and the ministry. Father, we are here from different denominations, different mm. nations, but for one purpose. Mm. And you are the purpose of our gathering. Mm. Father, we gather for the sake of the kingdom of God, not for any other business. I want to thank you for the sharing of this uh, fellowship as we have heard through your word, through your servant. Father, she has tackled uh, very powerful things concerning the church today in Uganda. We pray that, Lord, you save the church in Uganda from the immorality, from the division, hmm. from the idolatry, and the men are asking of glory. We hmm. commit the church to your heart. We pray hmm. that the church might deliver it and hmm. might be set free and hmm. let the church be set free in hmm. the name of Jesus. Amen. Like the King of glory. For your servant, Bishop Dongo, whom we have gave mantle to lead this country. Father, we pray for the wisdom. Huh. Use him mightily, O King of Glory. Huh. I know, I myself know that many people are opposing him. Uh -huh. Because long as from your throne, he will stand, he will overcome every yes, spirit, every Amen. opposition. You are not him, King of Glory, with you are not him. Father, we say thank you. We say thank, thank you. you, King of Glory. As we are expecting to meet again next Monday, Father, commit 
this journey from today to Monday into mm. your hand. And I pray that you let us live up to that day when we meet, when we all live alive and mm. we pray and we appreciate you. Thank you, mm. King of Glory, as we are departing from one another. We meet ourselves and we pray that we remain together in spirit. Mm. In Amen. Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. And surely God's and goodness God and mercy amen. and mercy all amen. the days of your life dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I see Brother Doné. Brother Dio Doné, I see your yes. name. Yes, your, Apostle. Oh, you're welcome. I did not hear your voice today. Uh, I was too following. <laughs> uh, no. God bless yes. you all. I am um, about to travel, so there are many people in the living room waiting for me, so I have to leave. Please, please be safe. We love you. May the Lord go ahead of you. And yes, thank yes. you so much for the great work. The animals, the animals, the animals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.